Thanks for tuning in to Red Belt Radio. The following episode is scheduled for one fall. I'm Jason, and this show is dedicated to world wonder ring stardom. Today, I'm covering my predictions for the 2024 Cinderella Tournament opening round, which takes place on March 9th, 2024. The first ever Cinderella Tournament post Rossi Ogawa's firing seems to be taking a rather unique approach. This year, if you've ever worn the red or white belts before, you're probably not allowed anywhere near this competition. The major exception to this rule is Mirai of God's Eye, who has an automatic buy in the first round as she is the winner of both the 2022 and 2023 Cinderella tournaments. Since it seems that Mirai was strongly propped up by Rossi and not necessarily by Bushi Road, the chances of her winning a third consecutive tournament are not extremely high. But that doesn't mean it can't happen, though. The Cinderella tournament last year was frustratingly difficult for me to predict or understand, and I'm wondering if this year will be any different. 2023 had an awkwardly high number of double eliminations on its opening night. It also had a false rally for Waka Skiyama that ended up crashing and burning, never to be mentioned again. On top of that, it had the aforementioned Mirai victory, which resulted in a clumsy, forced, and unexplained delay of her title challenge, ultimately making the already bizarre white belt picture at the time even more bizarre. In a year full of awkward tournaments, the 2023 Cinderella doesn't even have multiple injuries to point to as an excuse. I do like that this year has placed a strong emphasis on both rookies and deserving wrestlers who are more than ready to level up to challenger status for the bigger singles belts. With Bushi Road writing the script for this tournament without any conflicting opinions from Rossi Ogawa, I'm wondering if the results will end up less awkward than before. At any rate, I'm going to try and make sense of things by providing a series of predictions that are bound to be terrible. Should be fun. If you find these transmissions valuable, please give this a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment to let me know what you think. I'm not exactly sure what the match order will look like, but the eight-person free-for-all match scheduled for one fall should almost certainly be starting the show. You'll soon realize that I'm going to be picking a lot of wrestlers who are showing up in the States next month to start gaining momentum by winning here. Azumi is the first example, as she has at least three appearances in America on the horizon. I will take Azumi. We now get a look at the first of our Cinderella tournament matches, with Hanan of Stars meeting EXV's Hanako in the ring. Keep in mind that this round of the tournament includes a 10-minute time limit, and over-the-top rope eliminations are possible. Any match that results in a draw eliminates both wrestlers. Now, on to this match. Hanan and Starlight Kid have been building up a back-and-forth rivalry lately. They seem determined to face each other in this year's Cinderella. I believe them. I'm picking Hanan. Next, we have a matchup between the rookie Yuzuki of Stars and Starlight Kid of Oedo Tai. Again, I think Stardom has already telegraphed a showdown between Hanan and Starlight Kid, so I'm picking Starlight Kid to advance. There's also the returning Momo Kogo of Stars, who will be battling Xena of EXV. Momo seems to be taking this tournament very seriously, which doesn't necessarily signify a lot, but the fact that she's performing in America next month 
does, in my opinion. Besides, Xena smashing her teammate Waka, who is waiting in the next round, is just too depressing. Picking and rooting for Momo Kogo. Koguma of Stars will fight against Ruaka of Oedotai. This match has an okay chance of being a double elimination, but I'm not interested in actively trying to predict those. I think Koguma advancing to face Hazuki, who is waiting in the next round, is the most interesting thing to do, and I'm guessing stardom agrees. My pick is Koguma. I have to give Saki Kashima credit. Since she had the most hilarious match of last year's Cinderella, when she faced Shuri and tried everything she possibly could to cheat her way to a win. This year, she's facing Saya Ida of Stars, and I think she has an okay chance. However, the winner of this match goes on to face Mei Sara, and Saki Kashima doesn't feel like much of a threat to Mei since the story between the two of them already ran its course during the high-speed title chase last year. There's really no sense of danger or prestige for Mei Sara if she faces Saki now, so at least Saya Ida is somewhat of a fresh opponent. I will pick Saya Ida. Yuna Mizumori of Cosmic Angels vs. Lady C of Queen's Quest. I think a lot of us want Lady C to advance as a character sooner rather than later, but Yuna is the one member of Cosmic Angels I'm picking to advance this round, and that faction probably needs someone to go deeper into the tournament. I'm picking Yuna. This is where things get awkward, because part of this tournament's goal is to showcase the rookies. We're starting to see that there's a decent chance none of the rookies actually advance, which seems paradoxical. For now, I'll assume that faction leader Natsuko Tora is not about to be utterly disgraced by losing to Sayaka Kurara, even though I think Kurara is truly awesome and doing all the right things at such an early stage of her career. I have to pick Natsuko. Now for my dark horse. We have Miyu Amasaki of Queen's Quest versus Rana Yagami of God's Eye. As I mentioned, it would be a bit strange for no rookies whatsoever to advance in a tournament that has gone out of its way to include them. Rana Yagami is actually positioned as one of the weakest rookies, but these tournaments are usually synonymous with upsets. So here's your upset. Whoever wins here will probably also beat my Sakurai next round, since Sakurai has been losing left and right since Rossi's departure. I'm making things interesting and choosing Rana Yagami here. Leaving the tournament behind now, we have a Future of Stardom title match between Rina of Oedotai and Miran from the company World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana. Firstly, I think it's dope that the Future belt has been showcased on a lot of big shows lately. Rina has been doing a stellar job. If they wanted her to lose the belt, it would have happened against Yuzuki or Miyu. It's not happening here. I'm picking Rina. Natsupoi returns in a tag team match alongside Saori Ano, and the two will be facing outsiders Saore and Chihiro Hashimoto. If you watched the March 2nd house show in Ishikawa, you saw that Tam Nakano and Saori Ano were portrayed as just about the best of friends. I think that's all a setup. I think that's the high point before the dramatic turn. I think we are going to see a lot of strife within Cosmic Angels in the near future, and it's gonna start here. Natsupoi and Saori Ano are going to have some kind of failure to work as a team, and they're going to lose. And from there, the first great drama 
of the post-Rossi era will be ready to begin. I'm picking Sare and Chihiro Hashimoto. Next is a six-woman tag match between Shuri, Julia, and Konami versus the team of Stephanie Vaquer, Momo Watanabe, and Fuki Gen Death. This is a preview match of Julia's title loss, or I, I, I mean title defense, against Vaquer. And there aren't a lot of people who can be allowed to lose here. That being said, Fuki Gen Death can certainly be allowed to lose, so I'm picking Julia's team to win. Also, this exact thing happened when Julia was chasing Willow Nightingale for this very belt. Julia lost the tag match the day before and went on to win the title afterwards. Lastly, we have a three-way tag match between Aphrodite's Saya Kamitani and Utami Hayashishta, EXV's Maika and Mina Shirakawa, and the extremely rare team of Tam Nakano and Mayu Iwatani. I would not at all be surprised to see this match end in a draw. There aren't a lot of wrestlers who can lose, and you know you're living in a rare time when the most appropriate pin eater, booking-wise, is Saya Kamitani. With that being said, Tam's promo with Mayu on the 2nd of March was incomplete. Mayu didn't actually get on the mic, which makes me think she will this time. I think Tam could even end up pinning Micah to really ignite their red belt feud. But whatever happens, I'll go with Tam and Mayu's team to get their hands raised. I'm looking forward to seeing how awful these predictions end up being in hindsight. And I hope you're looking forward to the show. Feel free to share any predictions or additional hype. If you found this transmission valuable, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment to let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to Red Belt Radio.